podcast and we're going to start talking because that's what mark bell does <laughs> yep, yep. shout out mark bell for teaching us how to start a podcast um so that being said today we are going to talk about deadlift and i don't know how long this is going to go it could go for 15 minutes i know my cutoff is is probably 6 30 so 20 minutes of talking about deadlift should be sufficient um my I, i'm brain dead from content creation <laughs> right now so i would love 20 minutes he's a content creator at this point that's what his full-time job description is oh. i need to get an online certification for being a content creator and editing videos at this point because it's become <laughs> a full-time job and filming and filming <laughs> and filming yeah but i'm already good at filming so i'm not worried about that yeah. um, <laughs> filming myself is hard filming other people is easy so that said, we are going to get into it. Um, I guess, as always, if you guys want the best coaching in the world, it, it's THP. We just, that's why you're here, because you, you want to hear what the best coaches in the world have to say about jump training. And uh, I will put us up against anyone. Um, we have the highest jumper in the world. So that we actually even just more. had a, we just had a testimonial. Um, I don't have my Instagram on this phone, but the testimonial was saying, this guy that worked with us, he worked in person with world class coaches, didn't jump higher. And then working with us, I think a few months later, he dunked for the first time in a very long time. Four years or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. With two hands. Um, so we're good at our job. We know what we're doing. And uh, if you're serious about it, you should definitely consider signing up for coaching. Um, that said, getting into the podcast here of Deadlift. And we want to talk about its relevance for injury prevention. We're going to talk about its relevance for maybe being a uh, like a base work for of strength work for more specific lifts. Let's talk about its how it compares to power clean and, and snatch maybe. Um, and then you know, the obviously performance improvement stuff. So that said, Isaiah, tell me about deadlift in your training, how often you've done it and what sort of changes you've seen doing it less or more frequently. Yeah. I, I started deadlifting basically when I first started lifting when I was like 15 years old. Uh, that's like one of the, the big three powerlifting movements. And that was kind of where my background was. I read starting strength when I was young and that was one of the staple lifts in the starting strength program. If you don't know starting strength, it's basically three by five with progressive overload on squat, bench, deadlift, power, clean, shoulder press. And how, how he would set it up is you would squat. It's three workouts a week. You squat all three of those workouts and then you alternate power, clean and deadlift every other workout. Uh, so that's how I started to deadlift and I basically did three by five for like years. <laughs> I was all, all I would, I would literally like three by five randomly go jump for like three days in a row when I was like, Oh, I maybe should go in the weight room, go do some more three by five on the big three lifts. Um, I think my deadlift got up to three sixty five when I was about 19 years old. Um, I remember it was at three sixty five, and that's like after, yeah. And I, that's around the time when I started actually having like back issues. Like my back injuries was directly correlated to how much I was deadlifting. Um, so my deadlift just really slowed down around that time. I think I, I didn't deadlift heavy for a couple of years. Um, added it back in when I was uh, 20 years old. So I think I took like a year and a half off from deadlifting. Balance kid age. No, this was when I talked to Dr. Jacob Harden. Ah, um, we like yeah. this stuff. Th this is a this is a fun fact. The first place I ever heard of isometrics wasn't John. It wasn't Ebony Rio or anybody like that. It was I paid a hundred bucks to go see Dr. Jacob Harden because I didn't know what else to do with my knees. I saw his Instagram and he lived like twenty minutes from me. And I went in there and he showed me manual isometrics, the one where you grab your shin and everybody associates with THP for some reason. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so that's when I started doing ISOs and he kind of wrote up like a like a really short four week program for me and it had deadlifts in there. And my deadlift went to 405 that summer. Um, but again, same thing. Like, I think I just my back was always my limiter when I would try to drive my my deadlift back up uh from there i think we we did it when i first started doing like 
full on jump training, not load management with with THP when John was coaching me. Literally in one of the foundational cycles. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like if you do yeah. THP and you're like, I'm fully healthy, I want to train my ass off, you'll probably see the cycle that helped Isaiah's vertical go from like 44 to 47. Yeah. Uh, one of the cycles, at least. There was mm-hmm. multiple, but that foundational deadlift cycle was in there. Yeah. Like twice a week or something like that. I don't know. Maybe once. I don't remember. I think it's once. Um, but I think from there, my deadlift got up to 425. And then I honestly didn't deadlift much after that. Like it's, we use in THP, at least for the, the more like early cycles that we program for people, it's rarely in there. I think it's like one or two cycles that have deadlift. Um, and then aside from that, we mainly do like clean pulls and power clean and stuff like that. So I, I got it up to 425 and then I don't think we deadlifted for for a while after that like it was like that every cycle you got it up 20 pounds that that one in that singular three-week cycle i don't know how i honestly don't remember how frequently we deadlifted uh but no it's like up that, to that point cycle is only three weeks yeah so i, I yeah i think i think so because i remember we i deadlifted when we first started 405 i remember i failed 405 a few times actually because i hadn't deadlifted for a while yeah and then six months later, we did like one cycle and it shot up to, to 425. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. And then from there, I think I got like hurt, ankle injuries, uh, all, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, infamous Isaiah ankle injury. It yeah. Comes where usually unwarranted and like it's for a stupid reason. Yeah. <laughs> and we, yeah, from there we didn't deadlift for a while, but it wasn't necessarily because of injury reasons and i will say and i want to get into this uh because i feel like deadlifting is a double-edged sword depending on who you are and what your body's capable of and your technique I, the back issues i had with deadlift were purely related to technique uh because before i used to always deadlift with very when it would get to heavy weights my back would go into a little bit of flexion um around this time i i had really good tech i, I could hinge properly without my back going into flexion so we just didn't include it. There wasn't any particular reason why we didn't include deadlift. It's just, it's just variety in the training. Yeah, the reason I didn't include it is because I like to do a lot of Olympic lifts. And I'm not going to have someone pull in Olympic lifting and then also try to blow up deadlift. And this kind of brings me to one of the questions that I posed at the beginning, which is like, what's the difference between Olympic lifting and deadlifting, right? And honestly, you know, they have a lot of similarities. The biggest difference is that in a clean, your shoulders are further in front of the bar. And some people even in their deadlift set up closer, like they set up similar to an Olympic lift. Mm-hmm. Uh, yours is kind of similar to your clean, but your first pull is different. Um, yeah, so- it definitely feels way, it feels a lot different for me. A deadlift for me feels like my legs are straighter. I'm a little bit more leaned over. So it's like more hip dominant. And it's, yeah, it feels a lot more hip dominant on a power clean. It feels like, I think you've described it like this. It's like a leg press into the ground. Um, It's like a leg press, get my knees out of the way and then jump. That's what a power clean feels like. That's exactly what it is for me. And that's how I coach it. So that's how it should feel. Uh (laughs) Um, But from there, I think the next time I basically started going through a bunch of back injuries because of failing a power clean deep power clean and then squatting heavy without warming up and also playing a lot of basketball where you're like bent over at the same time combine that with bad posture back died for like a year uh and then again it wasn't related to deadlift at all and when i think a year ago probably uh saw a year maybe 10 months before i tested 50.5 we reintroduced deadlifts back into the training uh and it's possible it might have had a an effect a positive effect on my back health uh which i think we can we can get into i actually think so too um i very much i very much think so that's the case i think adding it in when we added in was appropriate and you know i you can collaborate on this i guess how did you go about reintegrating deadlift back into your training cycles yeah so I'll start off by saying there was a a lot of fear with certain movements uh, just because of my back. And I see this a lot. Like Travis right now, he is rehabbing from a back injury. And he's like healthy enough, in my opinion, to train super hard. I actually I was on FaceTime at a training session with him last night. 
where he hasn't squatted above 245. He squatted 245 one time in the last like six months. Yesterday, we got him to 305. <laughs> and it was purely because I was like, yo, Travis, stop being a pussy and just, <laughs> just go hard. Um, so there was there was a big psychological factor just because of the fear of injury. Um, but we literally just started with like, I think 95 pounds, um, 95 pounds. Next workout went 135, workout after that 185, workout after, and then just slowly progressed it up until I was basically deadlifting heavy. And the number one rule that I set for myself was good technique above anything else. Like if there was ever a weight where I felt like I would have to go into flexion to, uh, to get it up like that's considered a, a failed rep like don't even don't even attempt it um and it's interesting because like if you watch powerlifters, that's not their standard <laughs> work yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah but so right because their goal is lifting weight your goal is jumping high like they're like eh, if i f up my back i literally i don't so, care that's like you getting hurt jumping like that's your goal you know yeah and, <laughs> like so i i got my deadlift up to from 425 I think two years prior all the way to 480 in the span of like six months. I think if I were to say screw it and just like go into a little bit of flexion, I think I could have pulled five plates by now. There was actually, I actually think easily you could easily. Yeah. There was a video I sent you where I had five plates on and I attempted it and I got it off the ground by an inch, but I, and then I could feel my back start to round. I was like, Nope, fuck that. (laughs) And then just dropped it. Yeah, I, I think easily you would. And I think the reason your spine flexes like that is because it changes like, <clears throat> I, I don't know for sure, but doesn't it change the the moment arm? Like, doesn't it in some way alter, like it keeps the bar closer to you or something like yeah, that? Yeah, like, I think so. I think the, 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 how power lifters. Otherwise you have to use your lats to like keep it that close. Yeah, yeah. I think the, the what power this lifters do is. Not sumo. This is conventional deadlift. Sumo yeah. lift is cheating. Fact. <laughs> Far moves far less distance because your stance is so wide. Anyways, go ahead. <laughs> Bro, I saw I saw a video of a, a guy deadlifting the longest bar in the world. Like, he's like a welder. And he welded a bar that was like 50 feet long. And he went sumo. And it was literally like an inch of range. Because the bar bends. So he literally went like an inch. And it lifted off the ground. It was like 3,000 pounds or something. No. And then he like put it back. Yeah. Cause it's so much, it's so much bar bend and some, I don't know what the physics of it is, but you can like deadlift the longer the bar is, the more you can like deadlift. That makes so. sense. Cause, uh, well, well, what happens is that the, like there's, it's a torque and the bar whip is like, I mean, you'd still have to be able to lift 3000 pounds, like from that position so yeah. the bar. Like if you take the whip out of the bar, like a bunch, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like kept pulling until like the, like the bar did come off the ground you could conceivably lift like you just have to be able to to bend the bar to the point I would have to, in like such a strong ass position that you can lift like at 2000 more pounds i guess but 3000 yeah. pounds is insane I, I might be i might be completely like messing up the number um i was going to say cuz 3000 pounds seems impossible i'm not going to lie like yeah. from like like that would be that would be like eighth squatting 3000 pounds like i just don't know if that's possible or like eight, i can't yeah, I can't find the video, but if somebody can find the video for me and like co- like put it in the comments, <laughs> put it in the comments. put it in the comments. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so building it up, and then I guess we did say that you you felt like it maybe played a role in you being able to hit fifty. What do you think? And I have ideas, but what do you think it was about deadlift that played such an important role in your vertical? So. First, I will say, I don't know if it was because for the listeners who don't know, I introduced deadlifting back in and 10 months later and I did. I kept, I literally deadlifted every single cycle, basically, until I tested 50. Was- um, yeah, yeah. And I hadn't deadlifted for three, two years, maybe. Uh, yeah, two years. The conversation went like this. Isaiah, do you want to do something more complex or do you just want to keep deadlifting? <laughs> I want to keep deadlifting. Okay, then I'll write a cycle. My, my, my reasoning was if it's not broke, don't fix it. I just yeah, consistently which, was jumping higher. So um, I will say, in addition to 
deadlifting. I also was back squatting very intensely for the first time uh, mm. in probably a year or two. So I don't know. I don't even think it was the deadlifting. Maybe it wasn't even the back squatting. I think it was just the fact that I was getting an actual max strength stimulus for the first time in over a year. Before that, I, I don't think I ever – we were half squatting. I don't think I ever – got to like 90 percent effort weights on on half squat um we did do heavy power cleans but that's still not that's more of a power movement it's not max strength um so i think i I just actually trained max strength for the first time in a really long time which is very it, it correlates to two foot jumping really well what's interesting too is that like powerlifters don't see that happen Olympic weightlifters don't see that happen. They yeah. get strong. That's their only goal. <laughs> Just get as strong mm-hmm. as possible. Just deadlift 700 pounds. Deadlift 800 pounds. Deadlift yeah. pounds. Like, and they don't, they don't see the verticals budge. Uh, and they do dynamic days. Like Louis Simmons would say, lift as fast as you possibly can on your dynamic day at like 50 to 60%. Like that is West Side. Using, yeah. chains, using like variable resistance. Like all the same stuff that has always been thought to increase your vertical. And it's interesting because, you know, I, I think a lot of people have always assumed that and been like, oh, yeah, if I want to jump higher, I'll just, like, be a power lifter. And they do it because they're like, oh, getting strong is the key. I'm just going to keep getting strong. Well, it's a little and, bit more complex. But and like, this is another really interesting point. My standing vertical has not budged. Like, I think the first... <laughs> The first dunk camp, 2018, I tested a 38. The Vertec might have been a little low. Like, we've talked about maybe the Vertec had been leaning a little bit or something like that. Yeah. But And then I think my reach was a little lower than what we tested now. So I think – but worst case scenario, like, I think it might have been inflated at the most by three inches. So let's say it was 35. My recently, my standing vert was tested like officially. Like, I just bought the Vertec and all that stuff, stretched, oh, yeah. starts out reach. I tested at 37, so that's a, a two inch increase on my standing vert okay. with getting a lot stronger. And I don't, yeah, so that I don't know that that's something really interesting. And then no, other guys see also their standing thing is that you never do off vert, <laughs> yeah. Like, imagine if you only did off vert, like, cheat. Like you only, only did. That all. is a very good point. But that also. So it comes back to the powerlifting could, point. Exactly. Exactly. Which is, which is like, what if they just jumped a lot? Mm-hmm. Like, what would they have the best training? And. Because technically I'm, I'm doing the powerlifting method. I'm getting strong at my squat and deadlift, not practicing standing jumps. Going out, testing my standing jump. Like, why isn't my standing vert getting better? They're doing the same thing they are. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not. I'm not. Pra- I'm not jump. Like, I think two foot. I'm two foot jumping a lot. My two foot jumps going, You're going right. up. So I'm not. Yeah, I don't think I'm practicing my my standing jumps enough. I think you probably aren't if you wanted to be better at that. But like, who the hell cares about a standing vert? I, I don't. I, don't care. Um, I think like. I mean, like, if you want to care less. Yeah, if you want to do like the baby brother like approach. Like, if you, for some reason, want to set constraints on yourself, like, why don't we just do, like, the 20-pound weight fast approach jump? Because, like, now I want to have the 20-pound. <laughs> like, yeah, that's why I don't. Just create new metrics where, like, we make the thing that we want to do better, harder. Like, oh, I, yeah. I have a world record for the 20-pound weight fast 100-meter dash. Like, mm-hmm. who cares? Like, that, that's it. We want to know what the absolute pinnacle is. One foot, two foot, I don't care how you yeah. do it. That's um, why, I, that's what I find cool about dunking is, like, you're just seeing you're just maxing everything out how fast can i run to get even higher in the air what like what can i do to to get higher in the air not what can i not what can i do to constrain myself (laughs) and still and still jump high yeah like that doesn't that has no no one it doesn't matter that's what training is um that's pretty much what training is (laughs) for training and then like at that point who cares so Mm -hmm. yeah i think on that point it is really interesting i've never tried to do west i think the volumes with West Side, I feel like, and the intensity of West Side would be very hard to maintain while trying to do 
lot of jumping. I will say that. Like I would, I think it would be very difficult. And I think you'd be fatigued all the time. The other yeah. thing possible is that when you get so strong and you lift so heavy like that all the time, like if you have a, an 800 pound deadlift, your dynamic day is at 50%. You're deadlifting 400 pounds. 400 yep. pounds is not going to move fast, no matter how, like yeah. it's still 400 pounds. It'll move fast, but it's not going to move like really fast. Um, yeah. And so I think that also plays a little bit of a role that you're just always training to like move slow. Um, what you said also, I want to touch on that where the volumes that you see in West side would be really hard to handle and practice jumping at the same time. I recently experienced that um, with the training I've been doing the last couple of weeks on load management. If for those of you that aren't on THP, usually how we program, like, let's say, let's say it's a six by four back squat uh we would normally program like say it'll say like six by four last two at 80 percent uh on the on the squat that's different from like traditional i think like powerlifting programs where if you see a six by four it's like you warm up and then you would do all your sets at the same yes intensity and i i was training like that for no reason i just wanted just to make my your volume. Yeah, I just wanted to make my life double, freaking hard. Double the load. You didn't double the volume. You doubled the load. Yeah, yeah. I doubled the load. Same volume. And I was re- literally the last I put a I put up a video on YouTube, like why, like how to deal with bad jumping days and stuff. I think it was like three weeks straight where I could not jump. Like I was having my my flight time for literally 0.8 on like on my best jump. And I was like, what is going on? And then this last week, uh, I brought Daddy John back to <laughs> write my training. <laughs> for me we can't trust and, that they to do them training <laughs> <laughs> and we went back to like the last two sets um at the highest intensity and i had a decent enough jumping day it was still not my best because it's like a we're still on a training cycle but i could actually practice my dunks and stuff like that <laughs> and yeah i think that i completely agree with your point I, I think the loads that you would see in a traditional powerlifting program would be way too high to practice dunking and that's pretty much why THP exists because it is the middle ground. It is the it is the like balancing point, you know what I mean? For for like being able to do jumping and still improve and also get as much strength work as you can in without getting hurt. And our volume especially are- Yeah, especially with dunking. I remember when I first saw your programs, like this is when you were coaching Austin and Nico, I think. Yeah, I and, then. <laughs> and that was before uh i guess dunk training was as refined as it is now like i feel like now it's a lot more i feel like i was the first person to do it i'm not gonna yeah i think i think it probably came from coaching me like i was like a refined version of dunk training i think i was the first person to do it like turn around daniel okay daniel back was uh, like doing jump signs and his is like pretty good uh Paul it was like doing just like kind of basic like it was basketball. Paul Fabritz is, is yeah, focused like basketball. on basketball. And who else is there? Nobody else. There was there was your random there was a random programs like uh like Boing Vert uh the guys that use our videos don't give us credit. Yeah. Like they- Boing Vert, Vert Shock, Jump Manual, stuff like that. Yeah. But those aren't, they weren't guys that like, it's like the dunk, like the dunk world kind of knew, like, you know what I mean? Guys that were having frequent dunk sessions weren't doing those programs. It was mostly like basketball players trying to get their first dunk, like that, that type of thing. That's like the introductory, like what we were doing is like PhD shit. It's like, look, you got to go through the beginner, you know, your beginner newbie gains and do your own squat program and do your own like whatever, do your grip toe. And then when you're ready to, you know, play with the big boys and you want to train a <laughs> world class athlete, you, you can train like a world class athlete. We will do yeah. the programming to train like a world class athlete. It's going to be easy. Is it going to be easy? No, but it will make you better. It is effective, uh, more effective than anything else, and actually effective versus like oh, increase your vertical six inches in three weeks. I'm like that's impossible. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. But okay, and I'll improve your bench press 150 pounds in in a day. Um, mm-hmm. It's like equivalently what people were the claims people were making in vertical jump, which is just hilarious. Yeah, um, yeah, it's just funny. So yeah, it's... that said, uh, we were talking about. So yeah, so uh, so that that was kind of like there wasn't anybody doing 
like training dunkers, guys that were just having frequent dunk sessions, trying to dunk three hours a day, like a couple times a week. And I think I remember when I saw like the programs you were coaching, it was like insane, like insane volumes and stuff. And over time, as I think as you coached more dunkers and I think like when you started coaching me and I'm like, hey, like I'm kind of addicted to dunking for two hours every week. Like if I don't do this, I'm going to be really depressed. And I think it, like the the program almost like refined itself to where we could fit. Yeah, where we could like handle those long sessions once a week. Yeah. Um, and yeah, allow us to, to practice the, the sport the of dunking. School, yeah. And it's changed too. Like, I mean, we, I don't have any programs that have dunking three days a week. Um, I don't have a single program that says that if you want to do that, if you get up to three days a week of actual sessions, like I'm at that point, I'm just like, all right, throw the third session in <laughs> like, hope for the best. We've had people yeah. that, that are like, I'm going to try to dunk every day. I'm like, yeah, that's going to last about 15, maybe 15 minutes. Yeah. But um, we also never stop them because I feel, I think we both agree on this. For people that can get close to that. I've like tried, like Tom, Tom Barnes, Tom Barnes was able to do it. He made it through the gauntlet and I'm like, dude, try it. Like if you can do it and you, you like Dory Gilgana did it. So like, there are people that can do it. Hoop and Nate has done it and doing it. And I was like, dude, if you can do it, do it. It's hard. Yeah. And, it's, and it's like almost impossible. But if you feel like you can handle it and you want to try, be my guest. Um, but I think there's a hundred percent. Like, I think it's literally a hundred percent injury rate for guys that have jumped every day. <laughs> yeah. They don't make them like they used to. Uh, <laughs> bro, that's what... <laughs> That's what Guy, Guy Dupuis DM me, and I, cause I think I, I I put up a story post, and I was like, oh, uh, I think dunkers are gonna have like the more longevity now, like now that guys know how to train. And then Guy DM me, he's like, nah, like you got like the dunkers nowadays are weak, like everybody gets hurt, blah blah, like it's not like the old days. <laughs> the clay, it ain't the same clay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's their bones. <laughs> That's an inside joke, and we can't go into details about it. But uh, pretty much, um, <laughs> um, if you want to know the joke and you know us personally, I just ask us. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> so that said, uh, I feel like we've done a pretty thorough review of deadlift. We feel like it's useful. Um, we don't put a ton of the program with in regards to like Olympic lifting. Well, because we have so much Olympic lifting in there, but it does bleed in. We feel like it has a lot of value and it is a really good tool for building up your capacity for your spine. Um, in as terms long of as the, your spine is straight, as long as your spine is straight, keep your spine straight. I, and, uh, I've actually never really played around with deadlift, honestly, because my hips are doo-doo and I would not be able to keep my back straight. So I've done it a little bit. I think I've pulled like 385. Maybe I've gotten close to 400. I've done... I've definitely done 315. I think I've done 365, actually, is what I've done. Yeah. Somewhere. Like um, I will say, if you don't have the flexibility for it, put your ego aside and, like, elevate the bar. Like, yeah, start from a hard higher hard point. Hard <laughs> it's yeah. not. It's, or just do RDLs at that point, man. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. Just do RDLs. It's pretty much the same thing. And uh, I get a ton of benefit. I will say I get a ton of benefit from RDLs for different reasons, I think. Um, yeah. I, did I tell you I RDLed? Uh, a 45, a 35, a 25, and a 10. What is that, people? I don't even know. 45, like, 25, 205, 225. Why can't we do bar math? Wait, 45, 45? No. It was like the tree, you know? It was like... Oh, so that was, that was probably like 225, 245 around there? No, it was more than that. 45, 35 is 205. Oh, and then plus 25, plus 255. 75. And I did it okay. for... I did it for three because I was hook gripping. There was no chalk. And literally, I felt like my there was a slick bar. The knurling wasn't good. And I was like, dude, this is killing my, like, hand. That this. RDL suck. For grip. Right with that, yeah. <laughs> you need chalk or just, like, over under. But then I, my upper back was, like, pulling. So I was like, all right, I'm not strong enough to do this yet. My legs are strong enough, but, like, my upper back is not strong enough right now. Yeah. I, mean, I watched the video recently on a guy saying that he likes RDLs. He thinks RDLs are more useful than deadlifts because i think it was like the muscle recruitment or something like that like he it just you, isolates your hips man like you don't have to do anything with your knees it's just your hips yeah like your back like your back pretty much oh also 
guess what I so that you know the hip hip thrust machine? Yeah. <laughs> like you know the one with the belt? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so they have one at UMD, right? And this like this girl's on it. She's like smoke show, right? I mean my type, you know, is pretty much just like skin and bones, you know, whatever, like <laughs> sick white chick. Anyway, so <laughs> she's like doing two twenty five or, or like two forty five on each side. I don't know what the actual machine weighs itself. Like I, I think it's twenty pounds of resistance. Oh really? The starting resistance. Oh wow. Okay. So, all right. So she's like, whatever, doing whatever weight. She like has twenty five. I'm like, how many sets do you have left? She's like, oh, I have one set left. I was like, perfect. So I like get on. I'm like, can you show me how to use this? I've never done it. She's like, yeah. All right. So she like shows me. It's like a seat belt, and you like use Velcro or something like that. And I'm like, all right, cool. I got it. Thanks. So I'm like, she's like, do you want to take the twenty five off or forty two forty five off? I'm like, nah, I've never done this before, but that should be easy. So I like. Rep it out. I do like 10. I'm like, oh, it was a cakewalk. I'm like, let me, let me do, like put another 45 on each side. Do like 315. Well, I guess it wasn't 315. It was 645s plus 20. So whatever that is. Three, 315 minus 25. It's like 290. Yeah. So then I'm like, oh, that was easy. Uh, let's add another 45. So throw another 45. I'm like, all right. So I got four 45s on this machine. And like, it's like a college weight room. So people are like, and they're yeah. like, like a bean pole. Like I have like my skinny <laughs> joggers on and like, yeah. In like my THP shirt, I'm like you know blanky, and uh, I'm like all right, cool. So I do that for like ten, and I'm like all right. So another forty five. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, I'm at well two ninety plus ninety four ninety five. So you you're at four seventy at that point. Four seven. No wait. Five so plates. That, yeah, five plates is four seventy. Four seventy. So I'm like I think I can do this like pretty easy. So I just rip it for like five. And I'm like all right, let's put twenty five on each side. <laughs> <laughs> so i do another three reps and i'm like i have to get to 645s on yeah. this like i have to be able to do 645s on both sides so at this point <laughs> there's like this much space on the plate yeah. part like you can't fit it like you may maybe could fit one more 45 on <clears throat> and not and like it had to clip because the plates are rolling so it was like 645s there's probably room for one more 45 and i'm like i'm gonna the max this now so I did it, dude. That belt felt like I was gonna rip my skin off, but I was like, I'm gonna do this. <laughs> so dude, dude literally is like this power lift. He's got power lifting shoes on the seat of Capri's and he's just like just watching. <laughs> just literally watching me do it. And I was just like, like I'm gonna rip this shit. So <laughs> dude's on the leg press next to me doing like 315. And I've got like 550 pounds yeah. or whatever. I don't even know what this is. 560. I'm like, yep, I'm doing this. So I get it for two. And the third rep, I like get it almost all the way up. And I'm like, oh shit. And I got stuck. So I was like, no. a little bit, and then kind of just thrust it up, kind of like cheat, do a sloppy form cheat rep to get it, and then like throw the thing down, yeah. but I was able to get it, and uh, I felt really good about myself. It was a hilarious ego lifting hip thrust session at the Bro, I've, weight room. It's funny. I've gone through the exact same thing. Like, that machine is amazing. I love it. <laughs> How much have you done on that? I think five plates was the most I ever did. <laughs> yeah, you, you got me. you got me beat on it. Yeah, it's the only the only lift I might do. <laughs> the only two lifts I think I can beat you in now. Keep in mind, by the way, when we started, my power clean was better than yours. My swap, your power clean, I remember your numbers. Your power clean was 205. Or actually, it was, uh, might have been 225. It was 225. I think 225, yeah. 225. Your squat was 315. And your deadlift was, at, well, you said it was what? Uh, 405. Oh, it was 405 before? Yeah. So your deadlift was better than mine. And I remember that. Um. My squat was 365 or three, 365, 345, 355. I don't know. It was 155 kilograms. So yeah. whatever that is. Um, let's find out. 341. So I had you by 30, 30-ish or 25 pounds and then 26 pounds. And my power clean, I had you by 20 pounds. And my RDL, I don't know what it was at the time, but I like had you by a decent amount at the time. Yeah. Uh, and now you have absolutely blown me out of the fucking water. <laughs> it's not even close anymore, which is funny. Um, but the and only your calf raise was way ahead. My calf raise is, was is still actually. You could single leg what I could like. I think you could single leg more than I could double leg. My my seated calf raise might might still maybe be better. Maybe I don't know. One of the one of the calf raises I might have you, and I don't. Yeah. Know. Double leg is really good though. My single leg I might have you though. See, I think my double leg's really good. I think single leg, you would have me on it for sure. Yeah. Seated, 
We, I think we might be around the same. You might have me by a little bit on seated. Like similar sets. I used to be so much better than you at it, but now you're like pretty good. Austin, I think, goats both of us. I think he beats both of us. Yeah. The seated cap race is ridiculous. <laughs> We're going to catch him. Um, <laughs> and then that's my other ego lift, the seated cap race. I crushed yeah. the team. <laughs> okay, so uh, anyways, yeah, an RDL, I think, is the only other one I might. If you did it heavy, the only reason you wouldn't beat me is because of your back, but I think if you like wanted to, you probably could. Maybe, yeah. R- RDO, I don't like going heavy. Like, it just feels sketchy when I go heavy. <laughs> just love it. Every time I can put, like, 315 on RDLs and just rip it as a skinny, like, just skinny little, you know, twig boy in the gym. Yeah. Where, like, I also think I'm just, like, like my pussy's hurting when I do RDLs. Because usually I, I'll, like, I have power clean heavy as shit. I have squatted heavy as shit. And I get to RDL, I'm like, I'm just going 2 by 10 with 135. Like, fuck this. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't want it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just trying to get the volume in. It's like the main lift for me, honestly. Yeah. Um. Anyways, all right. I think that's it, boys and ladies. If you're listening, which uh, if you, I don't 100%. think any, I don't think any women li- listen to our podcast, honestly. Maybe Royal does. Royal Pal- Palace. She's yeah. uh, Nigeria on the national or the Olympic team for women's basketball for Nigeria. She is a freak athlete and can dunk at like six one. Um, and she can dunk well. She can three sixty. I think she can three sixty off one. She can 360, which is unreal. Uh, Anyways, thanks for listening, guys, and we will catch you on the next episode. Peace out.